Rachel, can you tell us about some of the trends? And like you mentioned before, you get to see, you get to know what the trends are because those people are reaching out to you in development and you know, as, as, they, as they're beginning to think about scaling. What are some of the trends perhaps that you could share unless they're confidential? No, uh, not okay. confidential okay. at all. Thank you. I would say the trends, um, which I did touch on a bit, is technology. I will also say that even in the last 10 years, companies that my former self would never understand what it means. What is pay-per-click advertising? You know, what does that mean? Um, the idea that magazines, for example, although we finance a lot of physical magazines, they're not making money the way they used to. Now they're doing big events, and that's how they're making their money. Um, so we'll look at things like that. Um, like I said, I love to keep current on what trends are out there. Mm-hmm. I, go to, I go to a lot of conferences. I go to technology conferences. I go to food and beverage conferences. I've been a mentor at a food startup boot camp. Um, and how did I meet that that boot camp? Because I went to a food technology conference, and so you know, smart. once you speak to people, I we were written up in Crane's magazine because nice. I met a writer at a tech conference, and she said, "What do you mean you're a factor and you're at a tech conference? Don't you do Garmin Center?" I said, "No, I do technology." She said, "Can I interview you so you can read That's the article great. on the website?" That's great. Um, and what's interesting about trends, for example, in the food business, you go to the trade shows now, you don't see potato chips and popcorn, you see quinoa chips and kale chips, and kombucha juice and all these things. That's a huge change in the marketplace. And we're on the forefront of knowing about them. Now, Rachel, you've been in business for a long time. Can you give some unique examples of companies that have been helped through Prestige Capital? I would say one of my favorite stories, um, and just because he's a lovely person and I can't name him, but I'm going to let him know this is about him. Okay, Okay. so he's a celebrity (laughs) chef, um, somebody that's been on TV that you would know very well. And he was introduced to me by a banker and he said, listen, this gentleman's written a cookbook. They pay over time. He has other projects he wants to finance. And so he needs some liquidity. Can you finance it? Now, it's a contract that pays over a period of time. um, And most factors come, most factors would not even understand how to do this. We looked at it and we said, okay, you're going to get paid this tranche when you do this thing and this part when you do this thing. And so because we're sophisticated and we understand it, we were able to finance it. And once we financed him, not only did I go to the trailer and get, uh, you know, watch the TV show, my daughter was invited to watch as well. My son was away in college, so he could not. Um, He gave us signed cookbooks. He delivered food to the office, you know, after it was all said and done. We then financed receivables for him being on TV commercials. So that's a pretty cool one and lovely. Uh, we also financed a designer, a fashion designer, okay. and we did not finance her receivables of selling to retail. What we did finance is she licensed her brand to another retailer, and she got paid whenever items hit the register, and she was able to put together a spreadsheet of what was going to be owed to her, and we financed that. So those kind of things are pretty cool. The other thing that I love to do is we finance U.S. subsidiaries of foreign companies. Many, many banks do not touch this. They don't want can to deal with that. that. Yeah, so, you know, you can be, for example, we had a very, very lovely company um, importing tomato sauce from Italy. It okay. was their U.S. subsidiary. Okay. I got the deal from a, a dear banker friend of mine, and Christina said, we will be financing them, but it will take us three or four months. They're at their high season. They need money now. Um, what can you do? And so we financed them. And when I saw them at the food show last year, they literally put the biggest hug on me and said, Mm -hmm. in 2013, when we were like scrambling for money, you guys stepped in and saved us and we'll never forget you. Um, And the U.S. subsidiaries, I mean, it could be from pretty much any stable country. Um, And I know that there's, you know, many, many companies realizing that, you know, you need to have a presence here in the United States. You know, Rachel, I just have to ask you a question on the human side. You know, I, of course, it's business. We get that. But how does it feel that you realize there uh, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of employees out there and businesses that are alive because of your services? Yeah, I mean, it is probably one of the most rewarding things that I have personally um, is that I'm helping companies, and I see that. We've helped companies, frankly, that were in bankruptcy because that's another thing we do, debtor and possession financing, bankruptcy on attorneys and turnaround people We'll understand what that means. And when you can save a company and keep Mm -hmm. them in business or a company that's troubled or a company that's growing fast and they had five employees and now they have hundreds because you gave them money when they were early stage and you believed what they had to say, that's very, very rewarding. Now, this is just, I was intrigued on Prestige website. You mentioned, you talk about the Shark Tank 
what what is there a relationship there? What what can yeah. you explain? What's that all about? Yeah. So um, my blog on the website, I encourage you to visit this this pretty right. cool blog is called Rachel and the Sharks. Okay, and again, um, it's on prestigecapital.com. dot com. Prestigecapital dot com on Rachel's blog. On Rachel's blog. So I went to my dear friend Jessica Staley uh, from Scherzer invited me to um, an Entrepreneur of the Year Awards dinner. And I was a guest at our table. And so prior to the event, there's a cocktail hour. You walk around with drinks and I talk to people. That's what I do. That's who I am. Um, I see a bunch of people wearing badges that say shark branding. I watch Shark Tank. I'm like, this is not an accident that that's the name. So I sidle up to these group of five right. people and I say, <laughs> hey, you know, what's that? And they said, um, where are Damon's guys? I said, Damon John? They said, yeah. I said, why are you here? He, they said, where well, he's winning the Master of Excellence Awards. They said, what do you do? Prestige Capital. Are you private equity? I said, no, I provide liquidity to companies. And this lovely gentleman, Joe Lear, says to me, boy, are you a factoring company? And I said, yeah. And he said, no, you're not. I said, why? He said, because you're really cool and fun. And most factors are not so much fun. <laughs> so I said, let's do business together. He says, let's. I said, can you introduce me to Damon? He said, sure. And I walked over to Damon's table and he said, do my guys have your cards? I want to work with you. And today we are closing deals that are referred to us by Damon John. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. it's been a wonderful partnership, and they're doing amazing things. He's investing in some very cool companies, but also, again, the liquidity, the day-to-day -day cash flow is not what they finance when they necessarily finance a company. And so we love working with them. They're great partners, and Jessica, who works there, is an amazing partner to us. Wow. And it came by showing up. It came, I mean, there's so many takeaways for entrepreneurs, small business owners, um, even going back to some of the points you raised earlier in the show, where you, uh, you know, you, you walked Brooklyn, you walked Long Island. It takes there's, there's no shortcuts to really become a superstar. Yeah, you have to be open to everything. Your eyes have to be open. Your ears have to be open. You have to be friendly, for goodness sake. You know, there's a world of things to learn if you just talk to people. I talk to everybody. My kids laugh at me. I mean, wherever we are, I'm getting to know people, you know, and that's that's where you learn. You, you learn in asking questions. You learn by being friendly. Before I get to my final question, just want to remind the listeners uh, it, it, that in order to reach, in order to find out more information, you can visit prestigecapital.com. That's prestigecapital.com. Or you could, as as you heard from the show, Rachel is very approachable. It's not like, oh, no, I'm not sure. Because I think one of the impediments that there are, like, I don't know if I should call her. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, make the cut. She'll tell you. She She's straight. So how could they get in touch with you? Uh, the easiest way is to call me at 917-902-3496. Again, 917-902-3496. We have a, about two minutes left to the uh, to the show. In these two minutes, because really it's a loaded question, but you have so much to share and so much experience, some tips, some takeaways for business owners out there. I'd say the most important thing in life and uh, as a business owner is you have to love what you do. If you can't wake up in the morning and be excited about your day, you're not in the right business. And I often say I'm a student of life um, because I'm constantly learning. I'm never done. Um, and I actually got a T-shirt from WeWork. Um, and I work out of WeWork space. And if okay. you're not familiar with WeWork, you must go on the right. website and Google them. Okay. But they're shared workspace. And I got a T-shirt that says student of life. And that's what I am. And WeWork, by the way, um, working out of that space, because I do work in Manhattan and the corporate headquarters is in New Jersey, I have met so many entrepreneurs. And the ones that I have helped or, or that we partner with or whatever are people that are passionate about what they do. You can't fake that. And if you're going to wake up, you got to love what you do. And I would say, you know, young people, don't go into your father or mother's business because it's the only thing you know. Talk to people. As a matter of fact, my cousin, her daughter was going to go into FBI research because she watched a lot of TV. And then <laughs> she started talking to me and she said, oh, you go to conferences and you go to trade shows and you meet people. And she goes, tell me about that. And now yeah. she's in marketing and she has a great job. And that's wow. really rewarding to know that I can Put the buzz in somebody's ear, you know, wake up and like, see what makes your blood go. You know, what is it, what excites you? I love the honor of interviewing C-level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe 
you'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.